Welcome back. Well, the failing New York Times giving us their version of a civics lesson, publishing an annotated copy of the Constitution, which I'm holding in my hands here, along with a few added digs, of course, at the president. The paper claiming its readers will, quote, learn what the country's operating manual can tell us about the age of Donald Trump. Joining us now with his reaction, constitutional law professor at George Washington University, Jonathan Turley. Professor, thank you very much for joining us. So I presume you saw this inside their uh, ed editorial section uh, yesterday. What do you make of the New York Times attempt to sort of rewrite the meaning of the Constitution? Well, look, I'm always in favor of printing uh, excerpts of the Constitution. I prefer it to uh, wrestling videos. Uh, but uh, the question uh, really is, what is it suggesting about our current situation? You know, there is a narrative that we're in a constitutional crisis. Mm -hmm. I've been very critical of this president uh, with regard to his tweets, which I think are unpresidential un and I don't think are very helpful to his administration. But it, when you separate the rhetoric from what the president has actually done, he actually has complied with the law. You know, when immigration mm -hmm. orders went against him, he complied. He appealed. When the sanctuary cities uh, cases uh, rulings went against him, he complied. Uh, so his history is actually staying within the navigational beacons of the Constitution. So you do have to separate in terms of what is actually happening to what has been said. That doesn't excuse what's been said. Mm. But when you look at what the New York Times has suggested in its editorial, it, I, I believe, gets way ahead of its skis in terms of uh, where we are in this country. Sure. It's such a great point, the, the difference between uh, rhetoric and actual actions and how, how uh, faithful he's been to the Constitution. In the introduction to, this, to the, the reprinting of the Constitution in the New York Times, uh, Gary Wills writes this. He says, and, and you know, it's on the front page of this section, a representative of the New York Times view. For most Americans, the United States Constitution remains a distant and archaic text, a relic to be revered, but rarely consulted. Do you think that's truly how most Americans feel about our Constitution? Well, I hope it's not. Uh, you know, the, I'm a Madisonian scholar. In fact, he's the last president I really liked. Uh, you know, the, um, these were geniuses of their time, and they still are geniuses. They spoke not just to conditions that existed in the 18th century, but very relevantly to conditions we have today. And while the United States Constitution is not a particularly poetic document, um, it has one great thing to recommend it. We're still here. It's sort of the all-terrain yeah. vehicle of constitutional systems. <laughs> it's gotten us through a lot. Um, well, and people could, could do well by reading it. As Mark Levin said yesterday, the, the poetic portion of our, of our founding was the Declaration of Independence. This is in many ways the operating manual. Democrats, though, are claiming <laughs> the, the, the 25th Amendment as an, op, as an opportunity to uh, you know, deem this president mentally unfit. What do you think about their constitutionality on that? Well, there is no evidence that I can see that would justify a 25th Amendment uh, vote, uh, either through a committee of Congress or through the cabinet. Uh, people, once again, are taking what the president is saying as a constitutional issue, that he is somehow incapable of, of being president. There's no evidence to support that. But people have to be very, very careful. Uh, you know, we should all take a Hippocratic oath in terms of the Constitution, uh, first and foremost, not to do harm. Hmm. It, it will cause harm if you start to lower the standard on a 25th Amendment. I criticized sure. the Democrats under Obama for being very short-sighted about what they were frittering away in terms of legislative authority. They should be very careful before they lay the foundation here for an easy way to remove a president. Prudent, prudent words, uh, very much so. Professor Jonathan Turley, thanks for your expertise. I Thank appreciate you. it.